Okay, this is chapter 14 from this book, The Medical Reformation. Um, this is about protecting your kidneys. Okay, here we go. We'll start out with this picture of the kidneys. So here's the right kidney, here's the left kidney. You always know what you're looking at with a medical picture that the patient should have their feet toward their feet towards you. So if you walked into the room and the patient's on, like say, a CAT scan table, this would be their right side, their right foot towards you, their left foot is towards you. Okay, so this shows the kidney. The kidney is connected to the urinary bladder by what is called the ureter. So it's just a tube connects it to the bladder. Uh, the ureter, when it contracts, gives out a little spurt of urine. That's called a ureteral jet. This is the urinary bladder. Right beneath the bladder in men is the prostate, and it clamps around the urethra. That's called the prostatic urethra. In men, as they get older, the prostate has a tendency to get hypertrophy, which means enlarged, and to clamp down a little more on that urethra, making it harder for men to quickly void. It's like when a guy over 50 goes to the bathroom, he has to ask his prostate for permission to take a leak. Okay, so that's the basic introductory anatomy. Um, stones will typically form in the, this is called the renal parenchymal tissue. By the word, the way, by the way, the word cortex means the periphery. Like cortex means bark, like the bark of a tree. So the periphery of the kidney is called the cortex tissue, okay? And this is the part of the collecting system. This is called the renal pelvis. I'll go into a little more detail. I have another slide that starts going into a little more detail. All right, so here's the same thing with a little more detail. All right, so here's the kidney, here's the ureter, here's the urinary bladder. The UO is called um, the, the ureter orifice, okay? Um, so here are the calyces, right where the collecting system begins for taking the urine. The little tips are called the fornices. This little part is called the infundibulum. This is the renal pelvis. This is UPJ, ureteral pelvic junction. Okay, so, you know, I used to do a lot of stone removal, stone uh, nephrostomy tubes and all that kind of stuff. So I would have to, like, be pretty precise about getting into these kidneys to put drainage tubes into them or put ureteral stents in, things like that. All right, so this is a common spot for stones to get lodged right at the junction of the renal pelvis and the ureteral pelvic junction. It can be very painful. My father had a kidney stone. He said it was like being kicked by a horse. Um, kidney stones will also often lodge right here in the distal ureter because it's a little tight, the muscular wrap around it, right where it enters the urinary bladder. That's a real common spot for them to get dislodged. You know, usually if they're smaller, you know, six millimeters or less, they'll, they'll get through. Um, just showing you can sometimes get cancers in the bladder is another cause of hematuria. Most common cause of hematuria, you know, is things like the prostate or things like kidney stones. It's rare to get lymph nodes around the ureter, but that's something that can happen. Uh, the bladder is also called the vesicle. So this junction of ureter and bladder is called UVJ, ureteral vesicle junction. So a stone stuck here would be a stone stuck in the UVJ is the medical lingo for it. Okay, so the main thing we're going to talk about is what can you do to reduce your risk of forming stones? Okay, stones most often you think of them as being calcium. Yeah, I know there can be oxalate stones, uric acid stones, fine. But we usually think of them um, as calcium in terms of, you know, the radio-opaque on a CAT scan, for example. You can see them on an ultrasound, but you see them a lot better on a CAT scan than you do on ultrasound. I can see little tiny stones with a CAT scan. With a, with an ultrasound, you usually don't see them until they're 4 millimeters or bigger. And I'll look at the same patient and see everything real clearly on a CAT scan. Then on an ultrasound, it can be tough to see them. Ultrasound is used for screening, like with spinal cord patients, for example. Okay, um, calciuria means there's calcium in the urine. But the most important thing you can do to uh, reduce your risk of kidney stones is don't eat meat, okay? Meat's got a lot more sulfur-containing amino acids, things like cysteine and methionine, and part of the metabolic degradation of these sulfur-containing amino acids is to make sulfuric acid, causing a low-grade metabolic acidosis. Also, the more protein you eat, the more acid you take into your body, because what are they called? What's protein made out of? Amino acids. It's made out of acids, okay? Uh, animal foods tend to have a lot more acid in general. They put a bigger acid load on the body. Um, the leaching of calcium from the bones can cause osteoporosis. So part of the buffering process to renormalize the pH with a low-grade metabolic acidosis induced by eating meat with the sulfur-containing amino acids, uh, 
part of the process involves leaching calcium from bone. So as you excrete the protons from the kidney, you also excrete calcium, meaning that you put more uh, calcium into the urine. And the more calcium you put into the urine, the more you increase the risk that it's going to precipitate, meaning become solid, uh, no longer be dissolved, come out of solution. And it can block up kidney tubules and it can progressively grow over time, that stone, until it can, it can block the ureter somewhere, especially if it gets big and then gets dislodged. It can then obstruct, again, like we just showed at the level of the UPJ, ureteral pelvic junction, or down low at the UVJ, ureteral vesicle junction. Um, let's see. Like I said, small stones are often, you know, pissed out, you know, when they're more than seven millimeters, though, they often get stuck. And the urologist is the main uh, doc that tries to remove those. And I know there's more than one theory of how the calcium gets into the, um, the urine, and there's more than one contributing way. Um, some of it is also that the animal protein leads to increased calcium absorption from the gut, leading to more calcium in the blood. Somebody who's taking a lot of calcium supplements, which I think is in general usually a bad idea, will have more calcium excreted by the kidneys. Uh, this is one of the reasons, too, another shown another benefit of fruits. They're more alkaline, fruits and vegetables, so they help alkalinize the urine, you know, and alkalinize the blood, so you're not going to have as much metabolic acidosis, and you're not going to need to excrete as much calcium in your urine. Um, increased calcium excretion from the kidneys is associated with increased calcium precipitation, Okay, we talked about that. Once a person's formed one stone, they're often at risk to form additional stones. The same person will often have multiple subsequent episodes. Other things you can do besides eating an alkaline, plant-based, vegan diet, um, you can try to stay a little more hydrated. That can be helpful. You can reduce your dietary intake of sodium, for example. Um, excessive dietary sodium is another major risk factor for stones because it leads to more calcium in the urine. I would recommend also avoiding caffeine and excessive psychological stress, sleep deprivation, they're all kind of related, corticosteroid excess, because they'll all eventually lead to increase uh, calcium in the urine. Excessive dietary vitamin D can also increase calcium excretion in the urine, more calcium urine, increasing your risk of uh, kidney stones. Uh, industrial fructose, like with high fructose corn syrup, uh, that leads to increased uric acid, and that can be associated with increased risk of kidney stones as well. Um, eating meat also increases blood uric acid levels. Remember what um, Kempner did when he wanted to protect the kidneys. He gave them a very low sodium diet, also very low in fat and protein, no animal foods. Animal foods in general cause more inflammation, and then there's all this auto, there's all this immune response to the inflammation with antibodies, for example, and the whole activation of immune system. And it leads to more inflammatory debris going to the kidneys to be excreted. So when somebody's eating more animal foods, they get something called hyperfiltration. And it's basically like making your kidneys work a double shift. Um, and that increases the uh, wear and tear on the kidney, so to speak. Increases their, accelerates their aging. So you, you don't want to overdo that. I'd recommend you don't eat meat at all. Anything from an animal if you have a choice. Plant foods are much better. Low-fat plant foods are best. The main job of the kidneys is to excrete nitrogen. And there's an old saying, I think it's from the Bible, if you talk talk sense to a fool, the fool thinks you're foolish. Um, and what I mean by that is I'll get sometimes asked to call friends or relatives, and I'll have these patients in the hospital with kidney failure, and I'll start talking to them like this. I'll say, what does a kidney do? And when I ask them a question like that, they give me this look like I'm being weird. I said, no. I'm talking about protecting yourself from going into kidney failure. What a kidney does primarily, its main job is it excretes nitrogen, the nitrogen from protein. So if you have a kidney that's failing, it's not able to keep up with its nitrogen excretion responsibilities, the nitrogen starts increasing in the blood, like the blood urea nitrogen, for example. You'll also get decreased ability of what it, what's called the filtration rate to, to make you know the urine, the concentrated urine. So you'll have a a decrease in the glomerular filtration rate, the GFR. So what I'm basically saying is, when I talk to them, I try to teach the patient. I'll say, what does the kidney do? It excretes nitrogen. Where does nitrogen come from? It comes from protein. Because there's nitrogen and protein with the amino acids. There's no nitrogen in carbohydrates. There's no nitrogen in fats. So if you want to protect your kidneys and lower the workloads, you avoid the animal foods, so you avoid all the inflammation. You also avoid... Um, protein in general to lower the workload for your kidneys. 
and then they'll have a better chance to catch up with their baseline responsibilities. Also, you want to maintain good blood supply into the kidney, so you want to avoid dietary sodium to the extent you can because you'll then have less vasoconstriction. You'll perfuse the kidneys better. Okay, uh, Kempner was a kidney researcher before he you know, became an internal medicine doctor and worked with all his rice diet patients. Okay, so the other thing the kidney has to do is it has to excrete acid. So again, by lowering your amino acid, that keyword there is acid intake, you make less work for the kidney. And by eating less meat, you also get less uh, you know, sulfur-containing amino acids. You get less of a metabolic acidosis. Um, this makes life easier for the kidneys. Let's see what else. Um, all right. All right, so that's a good way to go. And that's basically all I'm going to cover on the kidney. There's more to it than that, but that, those are the key points. So I uh, hope you found that helpful.